So I bought this trailer about a year and a half ago. When I got it, it was like covered in surface rust. So I cleaned it all up, I painted it. I had these seven foot long, 14 inch wide ramps and the openings back here were big enough for them. So I modified it to where I could fit my seven foot long ramps under it, which is really cool. And then I just used it. I used it for a long time. Lots of towing miles on this thing. This thing has taken me all over the place. However, we ended up getting this trailer, this big 36 foot enclosed trailer, and I've been towing with this a lot. I use this pretty much all the time now. I only use this on occasion when I'm going to like buy a car or something like that. So it's just kind of been neglected. And even when I was still running it, I mean, first the brake stopped working, then the passenger tail light, then the driver's tail light, then the center tail light, and basically now at this point, uh, nothing. Nothing on the trailer at all works. So we gotta resolve that, we gotta fix that. We need to get this thing back up and running because we are going to be using it a lot more for the next couple of months. We got a crazy kind of tow rig plan coming up and we're gonna need to use this for a little while, including a trip this coming weekend. So we need to get this thing dialed. We need to do new wiring, new lights, new brakes, new like redo, reservice the hubs and go through the whole trailer. So that is what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be refurbishing this 18 foot open car trailer of mine. I really like this trailer a lot and I just wanna kind of keep it in tip top shape and get it back to 100%. So first thing we gotta do, get unhooked from the big trailer, get hooked up to this guy, bring it up to the shop. Not a lot of room between the tailgate and the trailer on this truck. I use these ramps as like wheel chocks when I unhook the trailer, but I think I parked a little too close to this one.
got the trailer over here. It took a little finagling to get it exactly where I wanted it because I've got some stuff in the way here. But I was trying to get it like as much on the concrete as possible but without being too close to the wall over there to where I'd be cramped. Because we're going to have to get under this. I'm not sure exactly how I want to do that. I kind of want to just like lift it up and try to like tilt it on its side but I don't have any like equipment. Like I wish I had like a skid steer or something but um, yeah, I don't know. We might try it with the engine hoist, but we'll see. We'll get there when we get there. First, we've got a bunch of other stuff to do. So here is what we've got. So we've got some new electronic brake assemblies. So the, the whole assemblies are so cheap. It's like 50 bucks for the pair. So I'm going to just replace those entirely because I checked those and adjusted them when I got the trailer and they were pretty worn out. So we're just going to replace those because that might be part of why they're not working. Um, but I think it's mostly a wiring issue, but might as well get them changed anyway. We got these tail lights. I don't know if these are the right size. I hope they are. I didn't measure. I was being lazy. Uh, I don't know. We, I mean, I think we could get we could get that to fit. We'll have to get creative with mounting it, but it's not quite the right size. But I think the white part will fit in there, and then we can do something to mount it. So we'll figure that out. That's not a big deal. Those are just like factory, like incandescent ones. They're old and they're not very bright. And I like having bright trailer lights. I want people to see me and my trailer. So we've got this. So I wanted to do this for a long time, this kind of setup. I got this on Amazon as well. I got all this stuff on Amazon actually. I'll put the links below. I hope I remember. I never remember. Um, but yeah, I wanted to do one of these like this. So it's basically, you have your seven pin and then you have your lead to this and then the wires run into here individually. So it's really easy to rewire something if you need to. You're not crimping multiple things together, you know, and running, you know, one wire back and then crossing it over to the brakes. You can run an individual wire to each side. So you've got full power to each side. And um, I think it'll be a lot easier to diagnose issues, fix anything that's wrong. It's not much more than going with just the seven pin. So I think, I think that's the way to go. So we did that and then got a bunch of trailer wires. This stuff's pretty cheap for what it is. It's like, what, 700 foot rolls? And I think it was like 30 or 40 bucks. So we've got all our different color coded wire so we can keep it easy. You know, if you ran all the same colored wires, it'd be super annoying to try to diagnose any issues. And uh, for whatever reason, my enclosed trailer is fine, but this trailer and every other open trailer I've had, Ben's trailer, everyone I know with an open trailer has wiring issues. I, I guess just because the wiring is exposed to the elements all the time, but it's just one of those things. So I want to make sure that it is like as clean and as diagnosable as possible and as weatherproof as possible. You know, I'm trying to make this last this time. I hate messing with this. I hate not having lights. So we got that and that for our wiring. And then we got these clearance lights. I thought these would be a little bigger than this, but basically you just drill a hole. They got a grommet and I'll do them down the side, probably like five down the side. It's kind of my game plan for those, uh, but that'll be nice because this trailer doesn't have anything on the side. They need to get some more reflective tape too, but th those are those help a lot. They help other people see your trailer and they help you see like if you're backing up next to a wall or a car or something and it's dark, you can usually see enough with those lights. So I want to throw those down the side and uh, yeah, I think there's a couple more things. That's all I can think of right now and that's what we've got parts for. I am noticing though, this thing is freaking Super dirty. So I think first step, first order of business is gonna to be to pressure wash it. So let's move this stuff, get the pressure washer out, and clean this thing up some. All right, now that we've got it all cleaned up, I think I wanna do the clearance lights first. I think they're gonna be one of the more time consuming parts cause I gotta drill a hole for each one and I gotta mount a ground for each one. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure out where they're gonna go and start marking that. Well, I don't have bigger than a 5 8 or than a half inch drill bit, so stepper bit's gonna have to do. Definitely not the right tool for the job when it comes to thick material like this, but try to make it work. This stuff is just crazy thick, man. All right, 
One done. Time to do nine more. So I definitely need to uh, invest in some larger drill bits. Half inch is the max I have, but this stepper bit honestly killed it, man. I was really surprised. Those stepper bits work amazingly well for like blasting through sheet metal and thin stuff, but they're not really great for thick stuff because of the way they work. But I mean, it honestly did the job. It drilled about as fast as a normal bit. So I was pretty surprised, but yeah, I mean, drilling through these, it's just this trailer is pretty thick steel. So it definitely took a little bit of time, but we got it done. All right, I got this side all finished up. So we've got three in front of the fender and then two behind stopping where the dovetail starts. Yeah, okay, so that side's done. It wasn't terrible. This separate bit is putting in work. I'm fully assuming it is gonna be dead by the time I'm done with this project, but it's getting the job done. So I'm happy about that. It's just gotta last five more holes. So anyway, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side and then we can move on to the next project. Well, I got all of them in on this side, except this one, I don't know what the deal is. I thought like the first bit wasn't going through it, the step bit that I'd used on all the other holes. So I was like, all right, maybe it got dull. That's probably what it is. So then I switched to another one and then that one wasn't going through it. And I was like, oh, well, I've used this one a lot. That's probably what it is. And then I switched to one that I never used that was only like one size from being finished and like it would not go through it. It's just screeching. The only thing I can think of is like, the metallurgy because of the weld here harden the steel and it just will not go through it's not hard enough i, I don't know I, I have no clue so i'm going to try to get it in as best i can have to come back with a bigger bit at some point and try to get it proper though but for now we'll make it work so i'm trying to do everything that doesn't involve getting underneath it first so i think i'm going to go ahead and pull these tail lights out try to figure out how to get these guys in i'm not 100 percent sure how i'm going to do that it, like I said before, it looks like this white part will fit. I mean, we could definitely like epoxy them in. I just, you know, I don't know that I want to do that for sure because it won't be serviceable. But they should last a while. I don't know. Let's get this one out and then we'll we'll figure it out. Man, the sun is back and it's blazing. That stud broke off in there. Oh, that was easy. Oh, we might not even have to do much for this. This thing is going right in. We'll just have to make sure it stays in. Centered. Oh, wow. Well, that honestly could not have worked out better. That thing is like press fit in there. We'll do something just to make sure. I don't have to worry about it falling out. But I mean, you'd have to really try to get this thing out, pushing on it from the back. Wow, that's so perfect. <laughs> that worked out so well. Tap it in a little more here. There we go. Wow, freaking. How, you know, like, uh, didn't measure it, not what it was supposed to be, it worked out freaking perfect. Looks nice too. Before I change this one, old, new. Looks real nice in there. Swap this guy out real quick. There's more nuts on the back side here. Those are just the nuts holding the license plate holder on. Ta-da! All right, cool. That was easier than expected. This is what they look like. Look a lot better than the factory beat dingy looking ones. So cool, I'm really hyped on that. Like I said, that was much easier than I expected it to be. I thought we'd have to make some sort of clamp and screw it into the plastic and, and no, they were just pressed fit. Like, and like I said, I mean, 
you're not getting these out. Like I can't even push it out. Looks like I can still tap it in a little more up here. It's funny, people are always like afraid of using real hammers for stuff that's fragile. And they use like rubber mallets and stuff. Just don't hit it hard, you know? Just use the weight of the hammer to your advantage. You use a very light swing and usually it works out. I mean, there's some stuff you can't use a hammer like this on, but generally it's okay. So, man, dude, it is hot. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this tire off, pull this wheel off and swap this tire to my other wheel that matches the rest of the wheels. This one's gonna be like a bomb. Normally the Falcons I take out are tires at like 15 PSI. This one's at like 60. Still need to break the bead on this one, but I just wanted to show you guys. You can see the gash here. So I had bought two spares before we went to Pennsylvania, which is around a thousand miles. Made it all the way there, five minutes from the Airbnb, pulling out of a gas station we all had met up at. I caught the edge of a jagged curb and ripped this tire. I was so sad, but we have spares, so it's okay. smart enough to put the impact in the shade. Okay, now that that's done, we can move on to the brakes. We'll start on this side. needle nose. Oh, that didn't sound good. <laughs> I feel like it's always so hard to get cotter pins bent back straight. Oh, come on, bud. So close. Oh, it's like the, the little legs here. They always like separate when you're trying to bend them straight. I think we got it though. Oh, there we go. Always use a paper towel to sort your stuff. It's a little windy today. Got to use lug nuts as paper towel holder downers. And that's not super cooperative. Just keeps getting hung up. There we go. Gotta be careful when we pull this out because the bearings will like to go everywhere. Oh, well, there they went. This is what the pad should look like. And this is what this one looks like. As you can see, I mean, it looks like, oh wow. Well, there's some friction material for you. So it looks like, um, 
I don't know, it looks like this one was the only one doing anything. Or maybe that one got seized up and then broke free and it broke all the friction material off. I don't know. Either way, this assembly needs to be replaced. So we gotta get to the back side here. There's these studs and we gotta get the nuts off and we can pull this whole assembly off. All right, let's see if we can get in here. The good old electric ratchet. Oh man, it's hot. Just touched my head on the surface there. Uh, no. One down, four to go. I gotta cut these wires too. Thought I stripped it for a second there. I basically did, but we got it. Ta da! Just dropped that right on my ratchet. Like an idiot. This one came with the spring and adjuster just laying in the box. So we gotta get those back on real quick. Make sure let's shorten this up some. Oh, so close. So you can see what a new one looks like. You can see how thick the pads are, all that stuff. And then here's our old one. So you can see some leftover pad there and how the rest of it is just gone. Like completely gone. We'll need to take a look inside the drum that we have because we're gonna reuse that and make sure it's good so we don't destroy this set if there's a bunch of pad material in there somewhere. So other than that though, just gotta throw these new ones on. So throwing the trailer brakes on, it's pretty straightforward. The only weird thing about trailer brakes is all of the ones that I've installed, they all are standard thread. It's like pretty much everything nowadays is metric thread, even American cars. Um, but for some reason, they're standard thread, standard head size nuts, like the 18 doesn't really work well, but you know, it works enough to get it on. I probably have the right size standard wrench, but I just hate digging through my wrench pile to find them because they're not organized at all. But yeah, so get the bearing in, we repacked it, we got all that done, got it tightened down, we got to get our cotter pin in and get our um, bearing buddy cap back on and then pretty much done. That's pretty much all there is to it. Throw the wheel back on, tighten her down, let her rip. Dang it. I just went to film this and tell you guys I got this side done and I realized I never adjusted him. So I got to pull it back apart. We're going to wait on that. We're going to get the other side on. It is so freaking hot in the sun and at least this side's in the shade. So we'll knock this side out. Once the sun sets a little more over the building, we can adjust that side. All right, so I want to hook my power probe here up to the brakes and uh, just make sure they're working good. Well, we got it. We got some sort of a problem here. All right, well, I was messing with this and it wasn't working. And I was like, oh God, watch there be an internal short somewhere. No, the battery is just too dead. Now, sweet. The sounds of living in the country. All right, so on to the next phase of wiring. So we got all our wire loom to run all our wires. We got our junction box that I showed you guys earlier. So I think first step is going to be to figure out where I'm going to mount this and running the cable. So the cable right now is too short if the truck has the hookup on the bumper. Um, like on my Dodge, I couldn't even, I couldn't get the cable to plug in at all with the trailer straight. So I wanna make sure it's a little longer than that, but you know, when they're super long and then, you know, they're a little low, they, they drag and that's annoying too. So gotta make sure we mount the box somewhere where we can make it, you know, maybe a foot or so longer than that one is right now. So I wanna try to figure out how to get this thing up in the air, um, kinda high. So I think I'm gonna use the engine hoist, lift it up and put t stack tires under it or something because I don't have jack stands tall enough to get it very far off the ground and trying to work under these without them being up off the ground is definitely not fun. So I prefer not to do that. So we're gonna try to figure out some way to get this thing up high enough to be comfortable to work under. See what happens. So my game plan was to hook this chain up to the back, lift the back up, stack tires under it, lift the front up, stack tires under that. So push the engine hoist through the grass. That was a little bit of a struggle, but we got the airline hooked up. We jack it up and it's kind of growing up crooked. So I set it back down so that we can kind of center it better and get it on the concrete so I can roll it if I need to. Uh, so we get it up and then it's basically my plan was just stack as many tires as I could under it without lifting it and then lift it up and put the final tires on. So I'm not putting them all under it at the same time. So we get all that kind of prepped and ready, lift it up and just start stacking our tires under it 
set it down. It took a little bit to get it even because I used different size tires because I just grabbed what I had and that made it a little bit of a struggle, but we made it, we made it work. All right, I managed to get it leveled out. Gotta pull that whole wiring out back there and that'll be way easier. Well, I guess let's get to it. So we're gonna use the power probe here just to figure out uh, which wire is like constant, you know, just running lights and which wire is brake lights. So basically the brighter one will be our brake lights. So got the red one hooked up. So yep, that's pretty bright. So let's hook it up to the black one. Okay. Yeah, way less bright. So that's definitely, black is our tail light, red is gonna be our turn signal and brake light. Okay, so let's just start running wires. I screwed up and lifted the back up first. So, oh no, first, well, let's pull the fact, the, the old wiring out. Then let's start running new wires. I'm gonna run, uh, not, yeah, I wanna do it this way. I'm gonna run each side individually. It's a little more work because I could come down and then come over. I might run the brakes, I'll probably run the brakes just down and then over because they have a wiring that goes through the tube that's already there I, and there's no reason to mess with that. Um, but for everything else, I want it to be ran individually. So if my right brake light stops working, I can trace that wire right to the box. I can test it at the box, make sure it's getting power there, and then I can follow it all the way down instead of it going over to that light and then daisy chaining off that light and coming over here and being all up in here. I think it'll be easier that way. I think it'll be easier to figure out any issues and not be tracing through a big loom. So I guess let's get to it. So now we just have to pull the stock wiring out. It had been in there for a while and P-clamped and stuff. So it took a little finagling and cutting, but we managed to get it all ran to the front. All right, well, there's our stock trailer harness. It's been butt connected twice. <laughs> um, it was butt connector oh, three times, there, there, and there. All right, I think this is where I'm gonna mount my box here. I was thinking about mounting it like under there to keep it as much away from weather as possible, but then it's gonna be really hard to get to and diagnose if I have an issue on the road. Uh, here, I can just unscrew the lid, pull the lid off, and check anything I need to check. So, worst case, we can definitely move it later. Not a big deal. But I think for now, I think this is gonna be the best spot. Easiest to get to, easiest to access. It should be good weather-wise. Worst case, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll cover that if and when we get there. <laughs> so, nice and clean. This is kind of excessively long here. We probably won't need that much cord, so we'll figure that out as well. But for now, we have the gist of where we're gonna mount it. So I almost took the cheater way out and started butt connecting this stuff, but then I realized I don't wanna mess with this again. So I've been heat shrinking it. I've got the wires ran to this side. I need to do the wiring for these uh, marker lights. So that's gonna be a little tricky. I almost caved and ran this across and up that way because there's provisions for it to run that way. There's nothing over here. So it's kind of a pain to route it. And uh, I almost gave up, but I have to route these anyway on this side or either way, I've got to route wires for these. So figured, you know, might as well. But yeah, so anyway, that's probably the worst part of this is just trying to figure out how to route it because there's just no way to secure it. So basically I got to drill holes and put, I put like a P-clamp there. So I had to drill a hole through the seal and then uh, P-clamp it with a self-tapper. And then the spots where I can't get a P-clamp, I'm putting like some tape to keep it nice and tight and out of the way. So it's just a little time consuming. So just gonna keep working my way down and try to keep it as secure as possible. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do my wiring for this so then I can secure it all at the same time on this side. Well, I screwed up the trailer. I mean, luckily I only did one before I remembered it. Trailer wiring white is usually ground and black is power, which is super backwards and really always screws me up and throws me for a loop. So I thought about it and I checked it and yep, it doesn't work this way. You have to, the white is ground. So I got to put a, a ring terminal on this one and then start daisy chaining. No, I hear rain. Oh no! Come on, stay away.
All right, so this is where we're at. I'll show you guys underneath in a minute, but we've been daisy chaining them up. So basically power comes in and then also send a power out and then obviously needs to go up to the light. So let me show you, we got three of them done. Boom. They look so good. They're actually really bright at night. So I'm excited to see all of them, all of the lights in general on at night. I'm sure that'll look really good. So anyway, we got to keep going, but this soldering iron, last time I used it, it was fine. And now it's like, barely working it used to be able to squeeze the trigger and it would get real hot and the way uh, i like to solder i think it's the best way for stuff like this once you wrap these together you basically heat from the bottom and push the solder into the top so the water the wire gets hot enough to draw the solder in and then it, it basically draws all the way through i feel like that's a much more secure connection than kind of just putting it around the outside so i'm gonna go get another soldering iron i think it'll make this job way quicker too because it's taking me like 10 5 10 minutes to solder each one because I'm it, it's just a pain so a lot of time into it I don't want a, a soldering iron to be be the downfall of this trailer's wiring so let's run a Lowe's all right we got this side all wrapped up I still got to run this uh power wire to the junction box up there but the uh tail light wires are ran up there everything's ran clean underneath got p clamps I used also use this tape this tape's actually really good gorilla Gorilla glue tape seems to work better than duct tape, but anyway Got all the wires ran got all of them clamped and tucked and whatever and hooked up Since this side has like a tube for the wiring to run in all the way back because this is the side It would normally go down I think I'm gonna run the wires from the front to the back this time instead of going the other way So I think I'm gonna try to like run everything to where I need it and then uh, start cutting and splicing and soldering So it's my game plan so I was trying to pass this wire through the tube. It kind of comes down the frame here and like ends where it turns. That's like the first part of the tube, but it would get to the same point every time and just stop. And I'd try, I tried to shove a welding wire in there. I didn't have any issues. I'd try to run it multiple times. So then I decided to run it backwards and that actually worked. Uh, it's funny because I thought it didn't work and I got up to go pull it out and saw that it was poking through. So I pulled that through and then I was trying to run the next wire through and it was just, it was not happening. It was not gonna work. I tried like for five minutes and nothing, nothing. All right, I tried to push the wires through individually. It was not working. So now I've got this set up. I was able to get one wire through. So I taped it to these wires and I'm trying to pull it through. It seems to be going okay, but we haven't gotten to the point where they all got stuck yet. So wish me luck that it keeps going smoothly. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah! Check it out, <laughs> we did it! Sick! Okay, I'm stoked. That's awesome. I'll just run these all the way to the back. Well, yellow one doesn't go all the way to the back. Cut the yellow here. All right, I haven't been filming much just because I'm trying to get through it. It's already getting late, so. And this is day two. So anyway, that's my brake wire. So you can see we got them all ran. Over here we've got our yellow, so this is our marker light. Light, I just used yellow, because that's uh, for reverse lights, and I don't have reverse lights. But I obviously plug it into the running light port on that junction box, but just so I have different col colored wires. So I think I might try to knock out the brakes, the passenger tail light, the center uh, clearance light, and then come get these last. I just generally try to do the worst part first, so the these lights are the worst ones, but might as well get the other, the more important stuff done first. Before we could get back to work, FedEx showed up with some tires. It's kind of cool. Now they come back to the shop, so it is way easier to unload tires. Uh, once we got that done, we just started running the wires all the way through the little holes and tubes that go all the way to the back and got them routed all the way back so we could start cutting them and soldering them to where they needed to go. All right, I got the brakes done and wired. The, the most time consuming part of this right now has been soldering, just because these wires are pretty thick and getting them hot enough to draw the solder through them is like, it takes forever. So I've just got this side left, everything else is done. We got our tail lights done, our center clearance light done, all that stuff's done. So um, yeah, I just need to go through and do these, which got all our wires ran up here. This is this side. That's that side. So we just need to mount it, mount, make our ground. And uh, yeah, so anyway, let's get to work. So these clearance lights are definitely the most time consuming part of the project because I'm having to connect three wires together at once because I've got 
power in and ground into the light, but then I've also got power out and ground out to go to the next light. So, you know, that's obviously more time consuming to cut and strip and do all that. But then on top of that, you know, it takes a lot longer for the soldering iron to heat that much wire up enough to draw it through. And it's a lot more wire to fill with solder. So it was just definitely very time consuming, but I knew it'd be worth it. I really wanted to do it because I knew it'd look cool and it'd be a lot better at night. All right, well, it just poured for about two hours. So forced us to take a little break, but that was good. I changed into a dry shirt. Man, the humidity has been insane. The doors, like the sliding glass doors on our house are just completely fogged up all day. It's like 80% humidity and like 95 degrees. It is miserable. It's not the heat that bothers me so much. It's just the humidity because it just makes me freaking poor sweat. I, oh, I hate being sweaty. It's so gross. And you go inside and your, your wet shirt is now freezing cold. Oh, it's, it's rough. It's rough. But you know, we're coming to the end of summer. I'm just really hoping it gets cool soon because it's going to be so nice. And that's why when it's 50 degrees, we say it's cold because this is what it's normally like. Anyway, tangent over. Got all the lights on the side wired in, heat shrunk, soldered, all that good stuff. So these are all done. We got them all tucked up out of the way. Everything's good there. We've got all our wires ran up here. So this is the passenger side. And then these are our wires for the driver's side. So we got to mount our box, which got soaked while it was pouring down rain. So we just need to drill our holes and bolt that guy in and then start running our wires into it and crimping them and um, you know putting, putting uh, ring terminals on them. We're almost there, we're on the home stretch. Should I put this back here so I can just keep some rain off of it at least? And then it's harder to get to. We'll put it here, we'll move it if it becomes a problem. Leave the wires a little long in here. screwed up that one went a little high so I'm gonna redrill a pilot right below it try to make it work uh. It's all mounted up. I want to go ahead and do my uh, my ground holes and through bolt those. I think I'm going to do them, I don't know, somewhere around here. I'm going to drill holes for my grounds. Put in a spot where they can't be seen. Drilling holes has got to be my favorite thing. Especially through steel, thick steel. The stuff's like at least an eighth inch thick. Every time. Broke the bit. <laughs> Son of a bitch. That's my own fault. Shouldn't have been drilling like that. It is what it is. It's definitely a bad angle, son. I need to order new bits anyway, honestly. These bits have lasted quite a while. And like, they're definitely not as sharp as they were. And sharp bits save time. I guess I'm just gonna bolt these to the same spot so I don't have to drill another hole. It's kinda cool, you can see it coming up. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like before you could see it like start to poke through the paint. Yeah, uh, I kind of want to, I don't need to. I'm going to do two ground wires. I was going to do two spots, so I'd have like, not have to worry Different about. Different grounds. Yeah, not have to worry about my grounds getting messed up, but we'll do one. Yeah, all right. I'm sure it's fine. I just, I'm tired of my trailer lights not working half the time. That shit's annoying. Join the club. Yeah. That's why I just gave up on turn signals. Yeah. Yeah, so Ben's trailer. What did you, it just, it was a pain too. Yeah, my trailer, we rewired my whole trailer. We rewired my truck, like from yeah, the stock wires back. Right. And then the turn signals wouldn't work. And then we tried to like bypass signals, them. Right? Yeah, 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 I could have one or the other. So trailer wiring, man. I'm sure it was my mongoloid, like messing <laughs> it up, but. Yeah, whatever, we'll figure it out. All right, got our ground wires made. And that one that way, this one this way.
Okay, that's two done. Time to get all this wiring in. This is definitely a very satisfying part of the project. Right? Having ran all this wiring and doing all this and getting all the ends on and like the culmination of just like hooking everything up like went so quick and was the final step. I don't know, it felt nice to do it. All right, I guess let's see if it works. Aha, check it out. Got the power probe hooked up, zip tied on. We're going to green, which is our running lights. Boom, out. Got running lights all the way down. Got tail lights, center clearance light, other tail light, and then running lights all the way down. Sick, that's the main thing. Well, electronically, everything works. Last things we need to do, we need to put the wheels back on, get it off the hoist, and we need to either P-clamp or do something with our wiring up here. And we definitely need to P-clamp this lead. I guess, uh, I guess I'll get to it. Should be dark not too too long and we can see what all the lights look like in the dark. Ah, the moment of real satisfaction. Putting everything back together to set it down and be freaking done with it. This is a two and a half, three day project so it felt really nice to be lowering this thing off the tires and dropping it down and you know putting the stamp of approval to seal on the project being done with it man. I gotta say, it's nice to have this thing back on the ground. It was up in the air for like two and a half, three days. <laughs> oh man, it feels good to see it complete. I cannot wait to see it at night with the new lights. The new lights look so much better in there. I mean, they were so much brighter. And then having that, just having it all working again. Well, we don't know for sure. We gotta hook it up to the truck. I mean, I at least know that the wiring from the junction box back is working. We tested that. I just, trailer wiring is always one of those things, but let's back the truck over here, get it hooked up and uh, see if everything works with the truck. Find out. Oh, and here's, so, you know, I could have repaired this wiring, but it, it was just so jank. You know, it had been cut open and tapped into multiple times. Like that's for the brakes, you know, it's just like those stupid splice connector things and you know, like it, the thing I didn't like about this is like I had an issue with my tail light, and if I sent power from the plug, it didn't work at the light. Like I didn't get power to the light, so I had a short somewhere, some issue, somewhere between there and there. But it's all encased and housed all the way down. So like, how are you gonna find it? You can't. So I, I mean, the individual wire way is not as clean, but I think it's gonna be a lot easier to diagnose and fix any issues. So. Anyway, let's get, uh, let's get it hooked up. Let's do it and throw this junk away. This harness is T-rashed. truth. Ah, oh, we got it. I mean, we at least got running lights. So that's good. Boom. Oh, I'm so hyped. Finally freaking working trailer lights on this thing again. Yep, we're good for that. We'll throw the hazards on. Are they working? All right, now we just need to see if the brakes are working, which we'll know by the brake controller. Oh no, it says no trailer connected. Dang it. Well, I know that's not an issue. Well, it might be an issue with the, this part of the truck then.
try to do some digging. Well, I've already done some digging. Do some more digging as to why the brakes don't work. But everything else works, so I'm happy about that. At least got that settled. But I mean, it's new brakes, new wiring. I checked the brakes with the power probe and they work. So, I don't know. It's just the brake controller saying that, you know, basically that it's not hooked up to the trailer. Yeah, I don't know. It works with my gooseneck, which I granted I used the plug in the bed here. But I've used... I tried this one with the adapter, which that's the adapter I use on the gooseneck, and I've tried this one, and none of them will let the brake controller see that there are brakes hooked up. So, I don't know. I'm going to mess with it some more. I'm going to see what I can come up with. I mean, uh, it's got to be something simple. I really want to make the brakes work. It's not crucial on this trailer, but if I pull it behind a gas truck, it would be nice to have for sure. So, anyway, I'm going to dig with it. Dig with it. I'm going to dig with it. It's just weird because it worked for a second. It's kind of annoying that it won't manually override. We'll figure it out later. We've got some other plans and stuff that will involve messing with that in a, in a, in a roundabout way. So now we're just gonna let it be and we'll deal with it uh, when we get there. You, you'll see what I mean later. So anyway, I can't, uh, I can't let you guys off without seeing the trailer lights at night because I'm real hyped on those side lights. So we're gonna wait till tonight to end this video out. All right, it's nice and dark out. You can see the trailer. Dark. Also, I never showed you guys my LED interior lights. They came out really nice. Look at this. The trailer brake controller is working. It was off, and it's working. It's working. Now, I bet if I let it go, it's going to not work next time. See, now it says no trip. What the hell, man? It's so weird. Sorry for the wagginess in the camera. Dang, that looks so sick. Oh man, this will be really nice to be able to see the edges of the trailer like backing in at night when it's dark and obviously it looks pretty pimp so that's, that's a bonus for sure. I guess I might have put that one a little too close to the fender but see the tail lights. Nice and bright. Hell yeah man, I'm so stoked. I'm glad the, those, those side lights were a lot of work man but you know just especially having to solder them because I would have just butt connected them because if one goes out it doesn't matter. I ran the the running lights on a separate wire just because of that because that I didn't want to run them all in the same because that'd be five more connections to fail but uh anyway that would have made it a lot quicker but regardless we got it done and it looks freaking sick I wish my camera wasn't doing the laggy thing check it out dude hell yeah I bet it looks sick with the cab lights on the truck oh I'm stoked I am stoked all right well I just wanted to show you guys that you know, before we ended this video out, spent so much time on these lights, I had to at least show you guys what they looked like. I do need to rotate them, they're directional, so there's like a top and a bottom. And I, I realized that when I was putting them in, but I was like, ah, I'll rotate them later, so I, I need to do that. You can see that one's like kind of crooked, but anyway, trailer is done. Trailer works. We'll figure out the uh, brakes at some point. Like I said, it, it might be something with the truck. Who, who knows, you know, but I, I know for a fact they work with the power probe. I know they're getting ground there, which is what the brake controller should be looking for. You know, I tried to check and see if it was going to other pins by grounding like, uh, like the un other two unused posts, the reverse lights and the auxiliary power, and that didn't, that didn't do anything. It still didn't the register, so we got something going on. We'll figure it out, but I finally have lights on my trailer again. I'm so happy. So anyway, I guess that's going to be it for this video. Super stoked on how the trailer turned out. I'm glad we got it all sorted out. It's been on my to-do list for a while, but... You know, I've just been using the enclosed trailer so much, I didn't really have, like, a huge need to fix this one. Um, but, like I said, we are going to be using it more in the future, which we'll get to later. But for now, that is going to be it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.